I was born in a freedom fighter's family, and hence named Chandrasekhar. <laughs> and uh, because of the goodwill value of my father, I could go to America to do pursue my uh, uh, post-graduation education in food technology uh, at an early age. That was I was only 20 then. And after finishing the education, I started working in a food industry. And my one of my last job was to work on the prefabricated potato chips. You may be having, you may be having or eaten Pringles, Pringles. Everything was going really well. I was enjoying that job, the freedom. And it was already five and a half years doing all this. I was in America. My father, who was a freedom fighter, he used to write me beautiful letters, long beautiful letters, through which he taught me the power of a just society. He also taught me why I should come back to my village and work for the farming community. One day, over a dinner table, my American roommate asked me a question. Why every Indian who comes to our country for a study purpose and never goes back to his own country? Is your country, India, really that bad? I couldn't answer that question that moment. I also could not sleep that night. All I did was I drove to my work next, next morning and I resigned to come back to my own village to build my own America. I came back in 1976, end of 76, got married to Anuradha, who is a cancer immunologist, and we decided to be a farmer couple. We worked hard year after year. At the end of 10 years, what we found out that there is no dignity for us in the society. We had no financial stability and also there was a lot of mental strain. This is the same thing that happens in the case of farming community of this country today also. <clears throat> and it's the duty of a just society to give this dignity to this hard-working person, the farmer. <coughs> I become smart. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. So, <clears throat> farmer risks his uh, <clears throat> livelihood, he risks his happiness, and he continuously producing food for the society. <clears throat> but at the end of it, he gets loss of dignity. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this, it's the duty of a just society, to, to work, to think of a farmer, to give him that dignity for his hard work. And how can a farmer get dignity in his life? A farmer can get dignity by giving happiness to his city counterparts, by, by sharing his knowledge about food production. So we have these various examples. <coughs> This uh, person from Netherlands didn't know where the groundnut was coming from. Likewise, there are many other uh, things that you see that this is the green gold. People from city, our brothers and sisters from city don't know how this solar energy gets converted into food. And food is something without which we cannot survive. And farmer 
puts those things in place to keep producing food. So food, so dignity for a farmer comes from sharing his knowledge of food production. And this is what I'm trying to demonstrate here, that we show live things on our farm and, and people find it happy. And this is what we term as Krishi Pariyata or agro-tourism. And what is agro-tourism? Agro-tourism is an activity organized by farmer himself where leisure learning and fun is combined together. <coughs> so this is fun. We give this unique ride to the rest of the people. We call it WB ride, water buffalo ride. <laughs> and, and so Krishi Pariyatan is the only activity, in my opinion, that has, that has got a tremendous ability to attract able youth back to rural India or to the farms. And unless and until able youth reaches to the farms and rural India, we cannot build India into a very powerful and strong country. Me and my team, we have uh, empowered farming community with one more technique, and that is SRT. SRT is a Saguna rural, Saguna rice technique. And what is Saguna rice technique? Saguna rice technique is a zero till conservation agriculture technique where there is no plowing, no puddling, no transplanting, no hoeing, or even no burning of crop residue for, for production of nursery. So Saguna rice technique, yes, it's a beautiful rice crop, but it's not good only for rice. Every other crop that you take with SRT technique looks beautiful. It's very resilient and very uniformly vigorous. Look at, you already saw sunflower, the leafy vegetables, the groundnut, and all other crops you can take very good with, with SRT technique. And in SRT, there, is, there are several advantages, but SRT is a technique which is good for the farmer and good for the environment both. Here it is, uh, let me tell you the differences between conventional method and SRT. Conventional method, agriculture starts with plowing and that's the basic mistake of this is what the, the zero till conservation scientists all over the world are talking about. We are already facing two very important problems in the world. One of that is food shortage and second is global warming. And both the problems are interrelated and they start with plowing. Because plowing, as soon as they, we start plowing, the plowing creates problems of releasing organic carbon from soil into environment. As soon as temperature goes up more than 30 to 35 degrees centigrade, oxygen, the carbon in the soil starts burning and it unites with oxygen, becomes CO2 and gets escaped. So, <coughs> conventional method, it starts with plowing, whereas in zero-till conservation SRT method, we don't do plowing. Once we make the beds, permanent beds, those beds, we don't have to plow the land for next 20 years. We have to keep dibbling on the permanent raised beds, which was earlier picture, and this is what it turns into. We get wonderful crop. It, that crop is not only double, double the yield, sometimes it is triple the yield. Very high amount of productivity that, and, and the farmer becomes happy. Have you ever seen a farmer who is happy farmer? Has he ever said that, yes, I have become happy because of, because of farming profession? Or have you ever asked a question to maybe 10 farmers? How many of you would like to make your son or farmer, son or daughter to be farmer in the field? Nobody says yes. No farmer wants his, his son or daughter to become a farmer. So happy farmer is something that we are getting through SRT, zero till conservation method. Another very important thing that this is what, it's a big complaint issue uh, for, for rice related farming where rice farmers have to burn 
uh, organic matter and crop residue for preparing their nursery beds. In SRT, we have stopped it completely. There is no burning of crop residue. Whereas on the permanent raised bed in the dry soil, the work has become so easy that the whole family enjoys working in the working in the field. And this is something very important gain that the labor requirement has reduced a great deal. Then the rice crop, if you know, attracts a big uh, complaint, attracts a big uh, uh, issue that rice gulps a lot of water. For your information, what to produce one kilo of rice, nature spends 3,000 liters to produce one kilo of rice. So you can see this, this conventional method is involved with puddling of soil, puddling of land. Now puddling is in one first thing that it requires a lot of water and second thing all that excess water goes out and it takes away with it almost 20% silt and that 20% loss which is like blood of the motherly land it's a big loss uh, to the to the land then it requires a lot of labor now laborers have becoming scarce and these laborers are skilled laborers so requirement of water is reduced more than 50% and requirement of labor also is reduced more than 50% whereas <coughs> this whole thing <coughs> Uh, with SRT method, this is a fantastic thing. You can see this as a one month growth of without tillage and, and just direct seeded crop. One more very important thing that conventional method demands a lot of gober manure or, or vermicompost. Whereas gober manure or vermicompost, they are made up of top portion of the soil plant, which is cellulose, and that's why that molecule of carbon is a weaker molecule of carbon as compared to the roots of the previous crop. In SRT we leave the roots of the previous crop in situ to decay slowly and, and this uh, gives wonderful crops. You can see these stubbles of the previous rice crop that are left in the soil. It's amazing. There are 2 lakh stubbles per hectare and we measured them after uh, desiccating them in the oven at 75 degrees for 24 hours and we found out that they are actually adding 26 tons of evenly distributed organic matter into the soil and that is really wonderful because of which it adds the soil becomes really beautiful and it is beautiful it's light it's, it's got nice fragrance <coughs> and it has as as the organic carbon goes up more than it starts going up more than one percent and here you can see Saguna Bagh has proved within three years with SRT technique it has gone to 2.14 percent and this is a wonderful thing if you if you know if you understand the soil science and because of this this thing what has happened next is that we have started getting earthworms showing earthworms in the paddy field was the first time in the whole world. Now imagine 50 percent, 60 percent people in the world eat rice. That much area the rice is grown whereas it was for the first time that it is 2000 farmers in Maharashtra are now able to show presence of earthworms in the paddy field. And as the earthworms came everything else starts falling in place. Birds followed it. Let's see more. The butterflies. This is all wonderful things that we are seeing. Butterfly congregation, never seen in my whole life before. Even butterfly experts came and they said this is not a very common phenomenon even in India. But because of SRT, increased organic carbon, these are all things that are falling in place. The nature is coming into its own uh, picture. SRT is a climate smart method of uh, farming. This is a farmer which is conventional method. Uh, in 2014, 15 and 16, three years there was drought. And this was the spate of the farmers. They failed miserably, but SRT performed very well. Similarly, in other years, 
like 2011 to the 2012 and 13 both years there was heavy rain all the fields paddy fields they become they became like big ponds they were flooded so much but even that condition also paddy performed very well this is the climate smart agriculture and all this is is in operation tremendous amount of uh, enthusiasm it's not only is in operation but but the input costs various input costs have reduced to 50 percent and the productivity has doubled so this is what is bound to happen the whole village after village is becoming very happy in short uh, what we want to say that the movement has started there have been many technologies there are many technologies already available but it is needed that the movement must begin and it has happened in case of SRT. So this is how I can confirm that we have, we certainly have a technique which has got potential to give enough, it, it, to, to make it really prove that it's a just society and along with it, it, it we are also able to combat climate change at the same time. Thank you very much.